And uh, I'm going to invite you here today to go to the Old Testament book of Lamentations, Lamentation, Lamentations chapter number three. I want to speak to you today a message called the key to everything, the key to everything. In other words, this one key will open all the doors, it will open all the blessings, all the things that you desire to happen in your life. I got the key. You know, I got the key. You say, Pastor, you got one key that will open every door. Well, I got one key that's going to open the door. Matter of fact, when you're reading what the Bible has to say, you'll realize that it is the key to everything. And if you don't have that key, things are not going to open up as they should in your life. Lamentations chapter number 3 and verse number 22 says this, The steadfast love of God never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So today I want to talk to you about the key to everything, and the key to everything is faithfulness. In other words, if you can be faithful, you can be blessed. If you'll just determine, I'm going to be a faithful person, if you'll just stay steady, faithful, steadfast, you'll be blessed. Now notice the Bible talks about the description here of God's faithfulness. He says it's great is his faithfulness. In other words, if you want to know what faithfulness is really all about, look to the Lord because he is the supreme example of faithfulness. And so this morning what I'd like to do is just talk to you a little bit about this subject of faithful. Now, faithfulness, I want to speak to you today about faithfulness. Now here's what I want to say. It's a lot more exciting to hear a sermon about how God is faithful to us than it is to hear about how we need to be faithful to God. It's always more exciting to read promises that talk about what God wants us, wants us to receive, he has prepared for us, that he has in store for us, than it is to read about commandments of what he expects out of us. But, you know, you can't have a good relationship. You know, I've officiated a lot of weddings. And I would know there would be something fishy about a wedding if the husband just looked at the wife and he said, now this is what I'm expecting out of you. And this is what I'm expecting. I'm expecting this and I'm expecting this and I'm expecting this and I'm expecting this. Well, if his whole attitude towards that relationship was just all wrapped around what he was expecting out of her and that she couldn't expect anything back out of him, how many know that's not going to work? So how long will that last? About as long as a bottle rocket. <laughs> it's going to take off, it's going to blow up, and it's going to disappear, right? Well, what I want you to know is in our relationship with God, you can't have this attitude with your relationship with God. God's faithful to me. Great is his faithfulness. God is good. God's going to come through for me. Yes, he is. But I want to tell you, the, you need to realize in a relationship, it's a covenant relationship. We have both interests in mind. God, we want to take care of what things are precious to you, things that are close to your heart. I want to be faithful in those areas. So I'm going to go to the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 1. And this is from the New Living Translation, and I think it will help open up your eyes to this text. It says, so look at Apollos and me as mere servants of Christ who have been put in charge of explaining God's mystery. So Paul is saying, I want you to look at me, look at my life, look at Paulus' life, and who are we? We are just servants who have been put in charge of explaining God's mysteries. And then he makes this statement in verse number two. He says, now a person who is put in charge as a manager must be faithful. Now he uses the word manager here. The King James uses the word stewardship. So the idea here, if you want to know what does a manager do? A manager needs to be faithful. Now, it's pretty obvious when things are managed well, and it's pretty obvious when things are not managed well. But the management of a situation all goes back to the manager. In other words, how is that individual stewarding that? Now, a steward, 
if you want to know about the definition of a steward, is someone who manages someone else's property according to their vision and values. So I'm managing this, and it's not according to my vision, but it's according to their vision, and it's not according to my values, but it's according to their values. So if I'm going to be a steward, a good steward before the Lord, I'm going to manage things not according to what I think or what I had this idea or I kind of had this little thought I'm going to drop in here on the Lord. It's more important that I'm finding out, Lord, what do you want to do? How does this need to look? How does this please you? So really, stewards or managers are based on two, their, their reward is based on two things. Are they diligent or are they negligent? It just falls down to one or two categories. Are you diligently trying to follow after God's vision and his values? Or are you neglecting his vision and his values? So a faithful steward is someone who shows that they are trustworthy in the transaction of a business, you know, a business matter. A, a certain command has been given to them. They're discharging an official duty. That's what a steward does or a manager does to prove or to demonstrate their faithfulness they're steadfast in an allegiance they're loyal they're conscientious these are all from the w vines expository and also from strong's concordance when you look up this word faithful it means conscientious it means you're just keyed in on what can i do well here how can i do what i do well now it means you're constant so you can't say, I'm a faithful person. You're faithful? Oh, yeah, I was faithful all day Tuesday. Well, most of Tuesday. Oh, faithfulness is not like a part-time gig. Faithfulness is for the rest of our life. Faithfulness is how we handle every situation, whether it's big or small. Faithfulness is how we pay attention to the detail. So basically, you, the opposite of faithfulness would be somebody who's fickle. We could say this, you're either faithful or fickle, which one? And so much of the time we base it upon emotions. You say, Pastor, what causes a person to quit being faithful and start being fickle? The thing that is that causes that, the thing that causes that is usually human emotion. In other words, well, I did that for like two weeks straight and I really couldn't tell that it mattered any. Well, you never know. I was, I mean, I was really, really faithful for two weeks, but I can't really tell that that changed the whole situation one bit. But you see, faithfulness is a long-term commitment. Now, I'm just going to give you a few thoughts about faithfulness, okay? The first thing I want to say about faithfulness is, is faithfulness is the commitment. Let me, let me just back up before I jump into that. Let me read a few scriptures, okay? So here's what the Bible says. And um, you know what's funny? I'm just going. This is an edit here. So I, ed I updated all my sermon. I, I, this is the first revision that I have in print. But man, I had some fresh ideas, and I put it in the second revision. The only problem is the two of them didn't sync up. So I got the original good one on my phone here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to my phone real quick. All right, I got the updated one right here. So I want to talk to you today about faithfulness. And you say, Pastor, you know, why do you say it's the key to everything? Because if you're missing faithfulness, nothing really is going to work in life. Pastor, I want a good marriage. I need a good marriage, Pastor. You heard about that one guy, you know, he said, I want a good marriage. And then his wife said, well, I, I, I need a watch. And that husband looked at his wife and said, honey, you got one on the stove. <laughs> that didn't go over either. Anyway, so I just want you to know that. I'm going to stick with the script, people. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. Anyway, I just want you to know that faithfulness is a reward. And here's what Jesus said about faithfulness. Luke 16. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. Oh, I got this little part-time job, and I'm not really trying, and I'm kind of sloppy, and I'm late all the time, and I leave early, and I don't talk and I'm on my phone all day but I'll tell you one thing if they give me a promotion around here I'm gonna step my game up I mean that's not the way it works 
Oh yeah, Pastor. I tell you, I'm I'm really kind of I got this old rattle trap car and I never change the oil and I never vacuum it and clean it and I don't have a I have no idea about the maintenance of it. But I tell you, if, if God blesses me with a new car, I'm gonna start taking care of that car. That new car. Wrong. How you treat your old car is how you're gonna treat the new car. How you treat the old house, how you're gonna treat the new house. It's it's like it's a reflection of what you do with a little bit is what you're going to do with a lot. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will trust to you true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you what is your own? So if you haven't been faithful in what is somebody else's, how are you going to be faithful with your own stuff? So really, tithe is somebody else's. It's the Lord's. We're just trying to be faithful stewards of that resource. So much of what we do, the ministry that God has given us, God didn't give me a ministry to minister to Tom. He gave me a ministry to bless someone else. Medical students don't go to medical school so they can help themselves. They go to medical school so they can help other people. And that's what we do at church. We don't just come to church because I need to get help. We come to church as a place to be equipped and resourced and empowered so we can go out and be a blessing to other people. That's the idea. So faithfulness is consistently doing the right thing for the right reason all the time. Sunrise, sunset, storms, wind, rain, feelings, no feelings, whatever. We're just going to keep one day at a time doing the right thing. So faithfulness is the proper use of the gifts and talents that God has given us. And we just have to realize that it's God's nature to be faithful. And when he comes and he lives in us, that faithful spirit will begin to come out of our life. Now, I was thinking of a description, or how could I describe faithfulness? Probably as a young minister, I came across this quote. And there was a missionary that served over 50 years in China. His name is Hudson Taylor. Hudson Taylor served all together for 54 years in China. His ministry was responsible for bringing over 800 other missionaries into the country. So it wasn't like it was this solo thing. He was responsible for bringing 800 other missionaries to the country. He started 125 schools, and he was directly responsible for some 20,000 people receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. He also was responsible for establishing 300 stations or ministry bases throughout the country as well as 499 local workers over 18 different providences in China. So Hudson Taylor had a huge impact in the country of China a number of years ago. His son wrote about his life, about his dad, and he said, for 40 years the sun never rose on China a single day that God didn't find my dad, Hudson Taylor, on his knees before God. So for 40 years, every day, Hudson Taylor was in prayer. Now that's faithfulness. And a lot of us, we want the outcome. We, Lord, I want those 125 schools. I want those 800 missionaries. I want those 20,000 people. We want the positive outcome. But we have to be willing to just be faithful to do what our hand finds to do, what is right in front of us. So we're very godlike whenever we're faithful. Faithfulness isn't an emotion. It isn't a feeling. I have to learn to be faithful when I have no feelings. You have to be faithful to just go ahead and do what's right, even when you don't have any emotion associated with it. Sometimes that we, we do things that we think isn't that significant, but in the eyes of God, it can be very significant. So your faithfulness matters to God, and the kingdom grows based upon faithfulness. Most people, if I went to most people and I said, do you know what John 3.16 says? Most people can even quote it verbatim. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But if I went to a person and I said, tell me what Malachi 3.16 says. Malachi 3.16. They'd say, well, wait a minute, Pastor. You threw me a curveball. I'm not real sure about Malachi 3.16. Here's what it says in the New Living Translation. Malachi 3.16. It says, then those who feared the Lord spoke 
with each other. And the Lord listened to what they said. In his presence, a scroll of remembrance was written to record the names of those who feared him and always thought about the honor of his name. So there's a book of remembrance in heaven, and that book of remembrance has a record of people who fear the Lord, meaning they have a desire to honor the Lord, and they always thought about the honor of his name. In other words, everything I do, I want to make sure, is this honor God? Is this pleasing to the Lord? Does this, you know, would this grieve the Holy Spirit, or would this be welcoming to the Holy Spirit? So one translation says this. It says, it's the chronicle of noble events. This book of remembrance is a chronicle where God keeps account of the noble events of our life. So faithfulness, I'm going to say this as a public service announcement. Did you know not all favor, not all faithfulness is spectacular? Give me a good amen. How many men, how many know when you clean the, clean the yard, you clean out the garage, you Spend a Saturday working on that. You know, when you get through, it's not like all of a sudden these flares go off. <laughs> Angels come down and they start serenading you. It's just a lot of what we do. It's not a big ceremony. There's no fanfare. There's no celebration. But guess what? We're going to keep one foot in front of another, and we're going to keep doing the right thing at the right time for the right reasons is what we're going to do. So I want to encourage you in this area. So here's a couple of thoughts about faithfulness, okay? I'm going to give you seven this morning. Number one, faithfulness is the number one compliment you can get in your life. Somebody said, oh, no, I want to be known as a talented person, Pastor. You got it all wrong. I want to be known as talented. Well, think about Jesus whenever... He looks at us in Matthew 25, and the master said to him, the one who was talented, the one who had talent, the Lord looked at him and said this, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little, and I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. You see, God did not celebrate his talent or his giftedness. God celebrated his faithfulness. Now, I'm going to tell you, whether you got one talent, whether you got two talents, or whether you got five talents, all of us have the capacity to be faithful. You say, well, I, I can't do much, but what can you do? You can use what the gifts that God has given you to the glory of God. Now, here's the second thing I'm going to say about faithfulness. Faithfulness is our number one accomplishment. Somebody say, well, at the end of your life, what did you accomplish? I was faithful to what God asked me to do. Now, Charles Stanley just recently passed away, and I learned a quote of his years ago, and it's one that I've used many times. Y'all think I wrote it, but I, I stole it from Charles, Gant, and I'm coming clean with you today, okay? But he used to make this statement, obey God and leave all the consequences up to him. If you ever heard him, he'd say that many times. Just go ahead and obey God and just leave all the consequences of that obedience up to God. Now, what I want to say to you, there's a lot of times in life we just say full out, I'm just going to obey God, and I'm going to leave all the consequences of that obedience up to the Lord. How that looks, how that turns out, that'll be totally, entirely up to God. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse number 6, it says, Many a man proclaims his own steadfast love, but a faithful man who can find where do you find faithful people? Where do you find faithful people? Well, you find people that want to be celebrities, people that want to be stars. But if you say somebody signs up for a new job, what you looking to do? I just want to be faithful. I just want to help you guys run this business better. I just want to make things run smoother around here. Well, I tell you what, that, that gets you ahead of the game a lot more than I want one of those VIP parking spots. <laughs> so just, just realize that's the number one accomplishment of your life. Just focus on being faithful. You know, I first job I had was in a grocery store. And I remember I went to work at the grocery store, and back in the day, they sacked your groceries. You remember the good old days, right? And I remember they started me as a sacker. 
And then I stayed there sacking those groceries. And after a while, they said, well, you know, we're going to move you up to a checker. Oh, man, that was a big deal. Because, see, that was before they had the scanners. That was back when we had that slide rule. No, I'm just teasing. That, anyway, so we would, you, you would check in. Oh, man, that would, you'd kind of have a little conversation with the people. How you doing? You looking good. Hey, I think these are on sale. You got any coupons? You know, you kind of, you just kind of have a, kind of a little conversation. That was a, I'm, I'm thinking that was kind of an enjoyable job. But then, then they saw me at the front and they said, hey, hey, would you go ahead? We'd like to see about moving you to produce department. Then they moved me to the produce department. Then eventually I worked there, and then after a while I heard somebody was, a friend of mine's dad had a job out here at CMI, and they needed to paint that fence. They took the fence down, but they needed to paint that fence, and I took that. You know, what I'm getting at is, y'all, sometimes people are they're way ahead of themselves. All we have to do right now at this season of your life, just learn how to sack groceries. If you'll take care of sacking groceries, guess what? The next step's ahead of you. And then after you learn that, then the next step's ahead of you. Just be faithful. Bloom where you're planted. Be faithful where your feet are at. And just be all there where you're at. Number three thing I'll say about faithfulness is faithfulness is tested during challenging times. Because so much of what faithfulness revolves around is doing ordinary things. You know, people don't think of parenting is how much ordinary things are involved in being a parent. I mean, it's not all Disneyland or Disney World. How many realize that? And people, when they oh, we want to have a child, you know what they're picturing in their head? Oh, we're going to go to Disney World together. We're, I mean, I want to be a, oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do this together. We're going to go to Colorado. We're going to go hiking. We're going to do this. Those are the mental pictures you have in your head. You don't have the mental pictures of all the work that takes place day in, day out, day in, day out, day in, day out. I mean, people still eat. How many know those kids eat all the time? And there's responsibility. So faithfulness is tested during challenging times. Most of your faithfulness will revolve around small matters that other people don't see. Does that make sense? So much of what you're being faithful to do and so much of what you're being called to be faithful to do, nobody else will ever know it. And that's okay. God knows it. And we're not doing it to be seen a man. We're doing it because God has a book of remembrance and he sees what we're doing. Faithfulness in your present circumstances is the key to your future blessing. If you want to know how to get ahead, just be faithful. Be steadfast. Be loyal. Be reliable. Be content, uh, consistent. Don't be fickle. Don't be hot, cold. But just be steady. I'm going to be in there. So the fourth thing I'm going to say about faithfulness is faithfulness where you're at is the key to where you're going faithfulness right where you're at i'm going to be faithful right here i'm going to do whatever's right in front of me whatever my hand finds to do do it with all your might god blesses faithfulness he promotes faithful people now i'm going to throw you a little curveball and you don't want to hear this but i need to say it as a pastor because this is the truth faithfulness isn't always fun oh i tell you the shouting and the praise is i know you're doing it in your head but you know. faithfulness isn't always fun little things done right that's not always fun but you know what you do you just learn to say but no no if it's going to work, if my life is going to work right, I'm just going to be faithful in these small details. I'm going to take care of this little matter. I'm going to be faithful over here. So God promotes faithful people, and faithful people realize it's not always fun to do this. In fact, that's what causes people to jump track. That's what people causes people to abort the plan that God has for their life because they think, well, wait a minute. I was wanting to have fun in life. Now, y'all, I don't want you to think if you follow God, you're going to be miserable. You're not going to be miserable, but here's what you will be. You will be disciplined. You will live a disciplined life. And when you live a disciplined life, that means you don't do what your flesh wants you to do. You do what you believe the Holy Spirit's leading you to do. And so, you know, we have this, 
word in the Old Testament that says they sowed to the wind and they reaped to the whirlwind. They sowed one way and it came back to them like exponentially way more than they ever dreamed. And whenever people keep making wrong decisions, all of a sudden those wrong decisions start compounding and coming on their life. But people don't want to hear that sometimes you can be doing the right thing and it's not emotional. I've been in worship services that were very unemotional, but the thing that kept me going, I'm talking about worshiping God. I've been in worship services where you could really sense the tangible presence of God. You could really sense the glory of the Lord. But I've been in worship services to where there wasn't a real high sense of the presence of God. But the thing that kept me going was, Lord, this isn't about me. I'm not worshiping you because I feel something. I'm worshiping you because you're worthy of my worship. In other words, I'm going to pray not because I feel this urge to pray. I, I desire that. But yet there's also this, Lord, I'm just going to be faithful to talk to you during this season. So faithfulness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. In other words, I'm faithful because it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.22 says this, But the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, goodness. And notice this word, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. The Holy Spirit living in my life will produce a fruit. He will produce a byproduct of the recreated human spirit is this. There will be a faithful nature. Do what you say you're going to do. Honor your word. Keep your word. Begin with what you have. If it's just a little bit, go ahead and give God what you have, and he will multiply what you have, and he'll cause what you have to grow. Now, I'm going to say this. If you're whining while you're being faithful, you're really unfaithful. If you're murmuring while you're, quote, doing the task, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but I got a whiny spirit about me, the net result of that, it's unfaithful. See, Israel was faithfully in the wilderness, faithfully pursuing the promised land, but they had a whiny spirit about them, and the net result in the eyes of God was there's a faithful spirit, unfaithful spirit about them. There is a, a faithfulness in their actions, but in their attitudes, there's this whininess about them. Now, what I want to say to you is Isaiah says, one, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. It's not enough for children just to obey their parents. The Bible says children honor your father and mother. So it's not just the physical act of obedience, but it's the attitude of submission, the attitude of honor in the process. Well, it's the same way in our lives. If whatever you're doing, don't think, well, I'm, I'm faithful to God. And you're the biggest complainer in the county. That's not what God's looking for. Amen. Amen. So just whatever you do, realize it's got to be tempered with a good heart. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Let's do it with the right attitude. Let's do it with the right disposition about us. Number five. And I read this earlier. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. In other words, me doing what God wants me to do, that's the byproduct of the Holy Spirit living in my life. It's not like I don't have the capacity to do it, Pastor. You just have more grit or this person has more determination. Hudson Taylor was on a whole other level. Hudson Taylor was not any more saved than you're saved. The Apostle Paul was not any more a new creation than what you're a new creation. Peter was not any more in Christ than what you're in Christ. But you see, it's an application of our will. It's a determination to say, Lord, I'm just going to be faithful. Now, here's number six. Faithfulness is being godlike. Now, we all, nobody wants to act like the devil, right? So I said, man, that guy, they're just acting like the devil, Right? But there are some people, we don't say it a lot, but they're acting like God. Well, what does God act like? 1 John 4, 8, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God because God is love. Well, when you walk in love, you're acting God-like. 
But we also read from this Lamentations passage, Lamentations 3, 23, it says, every morning we see new mercies, and it says, great is the faithfulness of God. Now, what's he saying? If you look at this scripture, what's he saying? Just like the sun is faithful to come up every morning. You know, I've never had an appointment with somebody and said, look, I'll beat you at 8 o'clock if the sun rises. I'll be there at a certain time if, if the sun shows up. If the sun, if the sun doesn't come up tomorrow, I'm going to be there. Y'all, we know the sun is predictable. The sun, and what he's likening it to is the steadfast of the love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Notice this, great is your faithfulness. Wouldn't you like it for God to be able to say of all of us, great is your faithfulness? I mean, that's the return to us. You're, you're also faithful. I remember when I was a young pastor, this is in probably my first couple of years of ministry, I got before the Lord one day and I was praying and I was just like, Lord, I want my life to count for you. I want my, my life to matter in your kingdom. I want to honor you. I want to praise you. And I, and I said this to the Lord. I said, Lord, what is something that I could do for you that would be something great, something noble, something noteworthy what is something i can do for you and i'm telling you i heard the lord say one thing to me be faithful now you know i left there thinking well wow i thought it might be a little more spectacular than that i thought it might be you know be a prophet to the nations you know or do this or but you know he just said be faithful and you know what i've discovered faithfulness is like a multi-tool you know what a multi-tool is? I mean, you know, you can use it. You can use it in a variety of ways. Well, that's the way faithfulness. You can be faithful as a spouse. You can be faithful as a parent. You can be faithful as a church member. You can be faithful in the community. You can be faithful to pray. It just is a good core component that all of us should have. Now, here's my final point, number seven. What does the Bible say about faithfulness? Faithfulness is a life call. It's not like faithfulness is, uh, you know, I've decided for the next two weeks I'm going to be full out faithful to God. No, it's not for two weeks. Pastor, I've decided for the next year, by the grace of God, Pastor, for the next year, I'm going to be faithful to God. I'm going to be faithful to his word. I'm going to be faithful to prayer. I'm going to be faithful to church. I'm going to be faithful in my giving. I I've decided for the next year I'm going to be faithful. You know, some people might go, oh, man, that's awesome. That's so noble of you to do that. But, y'all, faithfulness is not for a year of your life. Faithfulness is for the rest of your life. And here's the passage for that. Revelations 2 and 10 says this. It says, do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. These are messages to the church there that you may be tested and for 10 days you will you will you will have tribulation for 10 days you will have tribulation notice this statement be faithful unto death and i will give you the crown of life so you say pastor how long do i need to stay with this faithfulness gig i mean how long do i need to hang in there on this faithfulness still I mean, till I retire, can I, can I unhitch at retirement? How long do I need to stay plugged in on this faithfulness deal? Here's your answer. Are you breathing? Yeah. If you're breathing, guess what? Be faithful. You know what your confession is, Lord? I'm going to be faithful by the grace of God till the day I die or the day the Lord comes, the rapture of the church. So what we need to just have that built in our spirit that, this isn't a short time proposition. This isn't a, it's a, like in marriage, it's till death do us part. I mean, we're in this for the long run. And so today, I want you to think in terms of faithfulness in your life. Now you say, Pastor, can you give me some just basic things that I need to be faithful to? Yeah, be faithful to the Bible. So, oh, Pastor, I tell you, I, I got some revelations. They all don't all line up with the Bible, but I got some really far out revelations. Y'all, they're too far out. Stick with the Bible. There's a difference between far out and goofy. They're really just goofy, all right. 
So, you know, be faithful to the Bible. Be faithful to read Scripture. Be faithful to meditate Scripture. Meditate means throughout the course of the day you're just reflecting, you're praising God. You're... Now, I'm going to tell you another thing you need to be faithful to. Be faithful to church. Oh, Pastor, I, I, I've been to your church three or four times. And I've decided I'm the most spiritual person there. Well, come on, because we need you, brother. Bring it on. Y'all, yeah. what I'm getting at is faithfulness to church will help you grow because there's going to come a season in your life when you go through what we call a, a tough season. And it'll be the encouragement of brothers, sisters, brothers and sisters in Christ. It'll be the encouragement of others that'll help propel you through that very difficult time. Be faithful to church. Say, what else can I be faithful to, Pastor? Now, this is going to sound basic, but it's true. Be, be faithful to always seek first the kingdom of God. Every decision I make, every decision you make, does it go through the grid of putting God first in my life? Anything that's taking you away from God is not of God. Anything that's kind of hijacking your values or hijacking your priorities, that's not the Lord. And what happens is when things just get a little bit off, and if they get a little bit off, in time, it, it gets way off. And so I would just tell you, just Lord, help me to seek first the kingdom of God. Help me to be faithful. Now, I'm going to tell you another one. How can I be faithful? Be faithful in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ to other people. Now that doesn't always mean you're sitting down and reading somebody to them the four spiritual laws. That doesn't mean you're always asking somebody to join you in the prayer to receive Jesus Christ right now as your Lord and Savior. It may include that or it may not. But you know, it always includes this, be a light, be salt. Wherever you're at, so, oh, Pastor, they, 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 don't, they don't allow the proclamation of the gospel where I, where I work. They won't allow that. They cannot forbid you to be a light for Jesus Christ, I promise. Oh, Pastor, they don't want me, you know, they don't want me out there preaching the gospel at work. Well, they cannot stop and never have been able to stop people from being a light and being salt and praying in loving people and caring. So, you know, be faithful in that area. Be faithful with your finances. You know, it's just like, Lord, help me not to eat all the seed. Help me to re-sow some seed. Help me to be faithful with whatever I get. And, you know, it's like that. What I do with a little bit is what I'm going to do with a lot. And so just whatever comes to your hands, Lord, help me to be faithful with this. You got any other areas to be faithful in? Yeah, be faithful as a parent. Be faithful as a spouse. Whatever marriage you're in is the marriage you need to be faithful in. You know? And, and somebody says, oh, I tell you what, uh, you know, I'm just not being treated right. There is a propensity within human nature to become dissatisfied. And Sharon's father gave an illustration to me years ago that I thought was good. He says, you know, you can take a cow, you can put that cow in 80 acres of grass, and you can have them out there and they're having all kinds of grass. Instinctively, you know where that cow's going to go? He's going to go to that barbed wire fence. He's going to stick his head through that fence. And he's going to try to get the grass on the outside of that pasture. In other words, he's got grass all around him. But where's he going to go? Let's go on the other side of that fence and let's kind of try to. You know what human nature wants to do? It overlooks what's in front of you. Because you think the grass is greener elsewhere. Well, the grass is only greener many times in people's imagination. So, you know, wherever you're at, just bloom, make the best out of where you are and be faithful. Now, here's my final thing is, be faithful joyfully. You know, the kingdom doesn't advance because we got somebody that's that, they're just a grouch. For years, my sister was a part of a church in Oklahoma City, and you would call that church, and this was in the day when they had more live reception, as you know, a lady would pick up the phone, and she'd pick up the phone, and she'd, she'd say, and she'd call the church's name, and she had the most 
uh, sad demeanor about her. You know, she's real grouchy, grumpy. And, and so everybody nicknamed her Sunshine. <laughs> you know, they called her, how's Sunshine doing? Hey, Sunshine, you know. And she just had this tone about her that was dark and gloomy. And, and it's like the total opposite of what you would want in a church environment, you know. But she had this. And the whole, you know, they would call her Sunshine. Y'all, if people come around you and start calling you Sunshine, <laughs> you might want to flip the lights on a little bit, all right? <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you, sometimes we can be faithful with, a, with the wrong attitude. Does that make sense? Oh, I'm being faithful to these kids. These kids don't know how good they have it around this house. But they're going to grow up and leave the house, and their only memory is you were mad every time you did something for us. It's true. Well, I, you know, my dad, he helps me fix the car. and you know, I mean, excuse me, the father is saying, well, I'm fixing those kids' cars, and I'm doing this. But they leave home, and the only thing they remember, dad really resented ever helping me with the car. They don't think, oh, my dad had such a kind heart or he was so faithful to help me. No, their whole deal was dad did help, but he resented every minute he ever did it. So it's not enough to do the right thing with the wrong attitude. You've got to have the right actions with the right attitude. And here's how you keep the right attitude. Do it as unto the Lord. I told this story not long ago, but I knew of a person who had a family member that passed away, not a part of our church. And at that particular week in my life, I had a lot going on. And something told me this family, who's not a part of our church, is going to call me and they're going to want me to officiate this funeral service. I just thought they're probably going to go to me. And in my mind, I was already preparing this script of what I'm going to say, and that is, I love you. I think a lot of your family member, honestly, I'm just not the person for this one because I have so much going on, and I'm sorry to disappoint you, but, you know, I just don't think this is a good fit for me. I had all this in my mind, and I was actually out in the backyard staying in a fence, and, I, and I'm reciting this little scenario. If they call, this will be my response. I love you. I appreciate you, but honestly, I'm just so overwhelmed with so many other pastoral responsibilities and personal responsibilities. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. And I'm painting, and right while I'm doing this little speech in my head, I heard the Lord say to me, do it unto me. In other words, I want you to say yes, and then I want you to take the attitude. You're not doing it just for that family, but you're doing it for Jesus Christ. Amen. And I heard the Lord say that. I can tell you where I was standing now in the backyard. I, the Lord said, do it unto me. From Matthew 25, when you do it to the least of these, you do it unto me. And so I said, okay, Lord, yeah, I hear that, and I will do it. And I promise you, within 90 seconds, my phone rang, and that family called me and said, uh, yeah, we were wondering if maybe you could help us. <laughs> I thought, I'm glad you waited 90 seconds to call me, you know. <laughs> Y'all, the thing that will cause us to have the right attitude is if we do it, with the right motivation, and the motivation is we're bringing glory to God here. Amen. We're not just going to go through this deal, but we're going to have the right spirit while we go through it. So let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, that you would help all of us here today to realize how important it is for us to be faithful to you, Lord. And Father, we know that many times being faithful is not always fun. Being faithful is not always spectacular. Being faithful is not always like celebrated by other people. But Father, it's celebrated by you. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, for putting in our spirits today just a steady, faithful spirit. The proverb that says a faithful man who can find help help you help us lord to be faithful to your kingdom help us lord to have that fruit of the spirit development of our life in our life of faithfulness 
in Jesus' holy name. I want everyone today, would you just lift up a hand to the Lord right now and just say, thank you, Lord, for helping me to grow in my faithfulness. Will you just ask the Lord to help you with your attitudes so it's not just the proper actions, but it's the proper attitudes while you're doing what you're doing. Father, we just thank you today that we're faithful even when it's not fun, even when it's not, you know, the thing that we would prefer to do at that moment. But Lord, help us keep our hand on the plow and be faithful to you, Lord. Praise God. Let's all stand to our feet.